previously on Dirt Nights. Some guy called and wanted to buy my car. I always tell people everything we got is for sale. But your voice leader in a new car, Johnny Scott, is out front. It's night six of the IMCA Dakota Classic Modified Tour, and the Dirt Knights are in Dickinson, North Dakota, at the Southwest Speedway. Four Knights have already qualified for tonight's 30-lap feature. The only guy that still has a chance is Bash brother Cody Bauman. You don't win races by having people like you. That's what I figured out for the longest time. You know, for the longest time when I was younger, I just wanted everybody to like me, you know, so I'd I'd almost get out of the way just so I wouldn't make somebody mad. You know, you can never win a race like that. Never win a race. So, whatever, I don't care if these guys like me or not. You got at some point you just gotta you gotta go. Cody starts on the front row of B Main number four, and he'll need to finish in the top five to make tonight's feature. Kyle Slater out of Longdale, Oklahoma is on the point, and they get the green flag. We're racing. Spencer Wilson gets cut off at the pass by Bauman, and that slows him down momentarily. And now he's engaged in another battle as they're really busy in the middle of the pack. Spencer Wilson pinned in the middle. He can't hardly go high or low. He's just stuck where he is between two cars, and he's dropped a couple of spots. Now Wilson sits in the fourth, excuse me, the fifth and final transfer spot. Finally gets that white number 75 down low. He'll get past Paul Stone in the 66P and shoots all the way up into third. Out of quarter two, still your leader is Kyle Slater, being followed by one of the dirt knights, Cody Bauman. All over, Bo Bauman takes advantage, rubbing his race, and as they come out of four, past the stand, and Spencer Wilson hanging on to third in the 75, looking for more. Looks like Kyle Slater got a little bit sideways and Bauman almost got into the side, or maybe actually did. Now Slater now being challenged by Spencer Wilson. Wilson way down on the inside of the track. Here comes Ulmer in the three machine. He's working the high group. He's moved into fourth. He's on the outside of Wilson as they go down the back straightaway. Bauman still the leader. Trying it down low on the inside now is Slater. And up high is Ulmer out of Mandan in the three. Paul Stone's fourth, Spencer Wilson is in the fifth and final transfer. And Tyler Peterson in the blue number one, trying to chase down the 75 to get himself to the show. They're running out of time because there's two laps to go. Bauman still out front, Slater in second. Third place, Travis Ulmer trying to work in the high groove. He seems to be gaining just a slight amount of ground on Slater down the back straightaway. He'll go down into turn number three and four. Homer with a good run. Tries to pull up alongside Slater. Slater now gaining on Bauman. Things are getting busy. It's Bauman down the back straightaway. This is the final time. Bauman in the four. He'll go down through the middle of turn three and four, exiting the turn. Slater taking a shot at him. Bauman will win it. Slater in second, over in third. Paul Stone in fourth, fifth in final. Transfer belongs to Spencer Wilson. Things working really good. It's pretty fast. I don't know. They got a pretty good car. Um, it's a lot. I'll tell you, after after hot laps, I did not. I I didn't think we had a good shot. Uh, we were, we drew bad. We started in the back. The thing was just garbage in hot laps, and it's been really fast ever since. So maybe it, maybe it'll go forward. Um, Starting 12, that's a pretty, that's pretty good, pretty good starting spot. So that makes five out of six dirt nights qualified for the night six A main. And when we come back, the guys make the final adjustments they hope will unlock the secret to speed on the Southwest Speedway.
The Dirt Knights is brought to you by the International Motor Contest Association, Bill Stein Shocks, Weir's Machine and Racing Products, Precision Performance, and by 49 Designs, Professional Custom Graphics. We're in Dickinson, North Dakota at the Southwest Speedway for night six of the IMCA Dakota Classic Modified Tour. Qualifying for the feature is in the books and we've got five dirt nights ready to take the green. Two of them, Johnny Scott and Hunter Marriott, are locked in a tight race for the Tour Points Championship. Johnny has a slim five point lead, but in the world of a touring dirt track racer, things have a way of changing at a moment's notice. Earlier today, Johnny got an offer to buy his primary car. The offer was just too good to pass up. So points race or not, he's got the backup car out and he's still trying to get it tuned the way he wants it. We've thrown the kitchen sink at it, so I don't really know. <laughs> Hopefully it works good. I mean, all the changes we made, I mean, makes sense to me to change them, but sometimes you go too far. I don't, I don't really know what to expect. We haven't, it's the first time I've ever driven this car. It's the first time I've ever been to this track, so. We'll just, uh, hopefully we made the right changes and uh, we'll see where we end up after this feature. Hunter Marriott had to run a B-Main to get into tonight's feature, but he's convinced the extra laps have helped his cause. I think we're gonna start uh, the fifth row inside. I think they qualified eight out of the heat, so just like drawing bad, start ninth, there's a lot of good cars up there, so. You really never know what's going to happen, but we've been rolling pretty good. Getting used to the racetrack, I think we got better. It's probably a good thing we ran to be, but uh, just to get more time on the track and get a more better feel, but I don't know. We might end up in victory lane. It could happen. Track looks good. Jason Walla is having one of his best nights so far this week. But the big show is always looking for that one final adjustment that will get the 27W to the front. You think we should, rather than have it way to the right, flop those spacers and move it to the left and help hold it up a little more or just, I don't know. Because it was getting down well, but we had that other shock on too. Last night? Yeah. We had that, yeah, we had the soft, soft one so it just settled down in there. At the end of the night. That one's going to keep it up, especially with should that big leave spring. It when you get out of throttle, it should. Hold it up. I can move it if you want me to. Let's. We'll wait. I'm gonna. I'll ask Andy about it. I hate bugging him every two seconds. Yeah. So we anticipated the track being a lot slicker than it was in the heat race. It was cleaning up good, and then they're watering some, so it's still kind of a crapshoot to know what you're gonna get for um, a, a feature. We did tighten the car up. Here's how they're gonna line up with four dirt nights in the first five rows, including Johnny Scott on the outside of row one and Jason Walla right behind him in four. A matchup that could create some early race fireworks. What do you think Johnny's gonna do when I throw a slider on the first corner of the first lap? He'll live. Huh? He'll live. I'm kidding. I'm just sitting there trying to be, like how can I outsmart a vet, you know, somebody that. Don't think about it. Yeah. This race, let's do it. You feel it, do it. I see what happens when you think about it. Don't I know, that. it ain't <laughs> good. <laughs> We've got 30 cars on the track and 30 laps to decide a winner. The green flag will fly at Southwest Speedway when Dirt Knights return. We've got 30 cars ready to light them up for the night six feature on the IMCA Dakota Classic Modified Tour. Tour Points leader Johnny Scott has his backup car on the front row. The question is, can he keep it there? Here's Larry McFall and Lindsey Lawson with the call. 
The green flag already flying. Get on the gas. Here we go. It's a main time. Hank Berry going down to protect the territory down low. Johnny Scott is in second. Marlon Seidler immediately jumps up top. Jason the Big Show Walla. And Hunter Marriott right behind Seidler as they go into corner one. The experience of Hank Berry showing as he jumps out front down on the bottom of the racetrack. Got to take care of those tires for 30 laps. Here comes Johnny Scott. Johnny Scott switching cars. He was driving a car with the number one ST on it. Now it's the 2S he's driving. Barry Scott down the back straightaway. One and two. Hunter Marriott all the way up in the third and the 62. Then it's the 12J. Oh, a change for the lead. Johnny Scott gets by the inside of Barry. Johnny Scott, your new leader. Johnny Scott passed the stand. Hank Barry in second. Hunter Marriott running third. Justin O'Brien in that fourth place car. Marlon Seidler running fifth. The big show at sixth. And the 21 of Jesse Haft is in the sixth place position. Jason Waller, the 27 and seventh. He's working the high side of the racetrack in one and two. He pulls us alongside Heft. Walla has been trying high, low, middle, trying to find some traction for that 27W machine. Now they draw up on the back side of the seven of Seidler. Three wide, they go into turn number one. It's amazing. How can you drive one car all week and then you jump into another one and you're still out front of the mod modified A main? What a performance by Johnny Scott. Barry still at second. Tour defending champion Hunter Marriott running third as they come out of the corner and head down the back. Jason Walla getting something going on the high side. He gets around Seidler. That'll put the 27W up into sixth. He's being challenged down low. It's the 3E of Eddie Bellick down on the inside out of Lakewood, Colorado. Out front from Las Cruces, New Mexico. It's the 2S of Johnny Scott. Hunter Marriott has now got around Hank Berry. He's in the second. Here comes the defending tour champion. Justin O'Brien now taking a look way down low underneath Berry. He'll settle back into fourth. Jesse Haft in fifth. Jason Walla in sixth. Eddie Bellick in seventh. Hunter Marriott, I believe, is gaining on Johnny Scott. Scott trying to protect down low, but look at Hunter Marriott, last night's winner going for his third win in five nights on the tour in that 62 car. And lap traffic will come into play, I'd say. It looks like probably another four laps, and these leaders will be in heavy traffic. Johnny Scott out of quarter four, down the back. Hunter Marriott's running in second. O'Brien is in third, Smoke and Hanks fourth, Heft is in fifth. Running sixth in the three machine is Eddie Bellick. This time by the flag stand, Johnny Scott clicks it down, 18 to go, 12 laps in the book. Hunter Marriott visibly gaining some ground. He continues to move in on the backside of the 2S machine. Then it's the 12th J, Justin O'Brien in that race chassis. Hank Berry, the 25 and fourth. Fifth belongs to the 21, Jesse Heff. Heff now challenges Hank Berry, slips down inside. Heff wants that fourth position, he's got it. Berry back to fifth. Jason Wallace still trying to build a high groove on this racetrack. Berry jumps up on the high groove, just about blocks. Walla, Walla goes up high, might lose another spot. Johnny Scott now into heavy traffic as he tries to size up Ulmer as his first victim. Hunter Marriott now way up in the cushion. And he's still slowly gaining on Johnny Scott and it's showtime as we now start slicing and dicing through lap traffic. We're halfway home, Larry 15 laps in, 15 to go. Johnny Scott still working the low groove. Hunter Marriott trying to work down through the middle of the racetrack. He knows he's gonna have to go in the opposite way the opposite groove of where Johnny Scott is trying to lap these cars. He's going to have a chance to win this one. 
Johnny Scott out front. Hunter Marriott in second. Third now belongs to the 12, J of Justin O'Brien. Jesse Hefton, 21 and fourth. Fifth is the 3, E of Eddie Bellick. Sixth, Jason Wallen, the 27W. Hunter Marriott had a good run out of the corner on Johnny Scott, and now he's going to be right behind him almost as they come past the stand. Johnny Scott down low in that back block number two. Hunter Marriott up high in the cushion. Here we go. No, Marriott kind of spins the tires, and that slows him down. Things are really getting botched up in front of him. Caution, flag is out. Car turned around in the bottom of turn number two. Whoa, this was getting busy as the leader started slicing and dicing through traffic. As a leader. The Dirt Knights is brought to you by APCO Racing Products, VP Heartland Fuel, KSE Racing Products, Superior Fuel Cells, Quick Car Racing Products, and by Speedway Illustrated. We're under caution about halfway through the Night Six feature, with Johnny Scott leading, Hunter Marriott in second, and Jason Walla in sixth. But on the restart, a couple of cars get turned around in the back of the pack and the caution comes out again immediately. As the leaders slow in turn one, the double zero of Mason Big Eagle fails to check up in time and slams into Jason Walla. The collision cuts down the left rear tire on the 27W, sending Walla to the pits for a tire change. The crew gets the 27W back on the track before the next green, but IMCA rules say any car that pits has to go to the back of the field, effectively ending what had been one of the best nights of the tour for Jason Walla. A lot of these tracks and a lot of these series are making rules designed to eliminate the track personnel from having to make judgment calls. And that's a product of that. Clearly I had I did ex done exactly what you're supposed to do as a driver, let off the gas when the caution is out, it's a safety concern and somebody else does not follow the rules and cuts messes my car up and his car was not damaged uh, so he could continue and, and that is when you talk about the emotions running high that, that's what really lights your fuse is he's the idiot who takes you out and he gets to keep his spot and then you get sent to the back. Caution lights are out. Johnny Scott brings him out of the turn. O'Brien with a great restart. Down past the flag stand. O'Brien looks like he's got the advantage over Hunter Marriott down in turn number one and two. Johnny Scott down to the bottom. Here comes O'Brien around the outside. And the 12J Rage Machine is raging tonight. Hunter Marriott way up high. Looks like those boys decided they're going to take it to the high side. Something looks a little off with that left front of Hunter Marriott. That front left front tire bouncing around as he goes around the top of the track and turns number three and four. Well, you called it, Lindsay. You said look out for O'Brien. And now he's out front by a nose cone at the flag stand with Marriott and Johnny Scott battling him. Hef is in the fourth place position. And look out, there's another spin. Oh! And another tire gets taken out. Oh, my! My! Green flag flies. Hunter Marriott. That left front wheel a little disabled. Doesn't slow him down as he charges through turns one and two. Down the back straightaway. He's already a three car length lead over the 12. J of O'Brien. Johnny Scott in third. Jesse Heff trying to take a look on the inside. Jordan Grabowski now into fourth. Whoa, side by side. I think there's a little bit of uh, trade to paint as O'Brien and Scott slid side by side through turn number one and two. And the leader loved that. Marriott drives away as the second and third place cars were scraping in corners one and two and now a huge lead for Hunter Marriott trying to go back to back in Williston and Dickinson. O'Brien in second, Johnny Scott is third. Grabowski running at fourth, Heft is fifth. Notable 
having his best run of the tour. He's up to sixth in the seventh. And looking for more, but Hunter Marriott. Nice and smooth down the back. O'Brien and Johnny Scott falling off the pace. And this time by, Marriott will click the scoreboard down to three laps to go. And it's Sunday drive time now for Hunter Marriott. O'Brien in second, Johnny Scott running in third, Grabowski is still in fourth, Heft is fifth. Dota Bone running in sixth, the three machine of Eddie Bellick behind him. Smoke and Hank Berry trying to stay in the top five, or the top ten, excuse me. He's battling Sean Stram, and it's the dark horse, Travis Hagen and Spencer Wilson. And Jason Walla has saved a few spots in this one, but not the results that he's going to want. It was the last time around, the speedway for Hunter Marriott, and there it is, that checkered flag, Marriott wins it. Hunter Marriott has the 62 car in rare form. Running from ninth all the way to victory lane for the second straight night and third time this week. What makes this win even more incredible is the discovery that Marriott ran the last half of the race with a busted upper control arm on the left front wheel. I had no idea. I, I quite frankly thought the race car was just fine. I, I had no idea. They said we we're pretty good and the car felt, the car felt great, but I'm just, I'm, I can't believe it. I'm going too. For Jason Walla, after this latest incident on the track, the frustrations of a difficult week finally boil over. There's one person who's got just as much as you, pal, and that's me, and I'm gonna junk your You better have five cars, all right? We consider Southwest Speedway our, our home track, and we got a lot of fans there, and our expectations are really high, and uh, that's probably what prompted me to go off the way that I did when, when that incident on the track occurred so that a little more fuel to the fire I guess than than just a normal a track we don't race at. It's been a long and difficult tour for everybody and with just one night left the points race is as close as it can get with Johnny Scott clinging to a three-point lead. Next time on Dirt Night the tour heads to Mandan North Dakota for the final points race of the IMCA Dakota Classic Modified Tour. Will Hunter Marriott successfully defend his Tour Points Championship, or can Johnny Scott hang on to his slim points lead? We'll find out next time on Dirt Nights.